I've got you all to myself. Behave yourself. <laughs> Don't I always? You look as beautiful as the first day I said I. Philip is devil may care, charming, very popular guy in school. Sort of gets what he wants. So as soon as Philip lays eyes on Don, there's something about her that he just can't quite understand, but he knows he wants to be with her. I think it's almost like love at first sight type of attraction. As that proceeds, we encounter a few things that Philip didn't anticipate, but it doesn't necessarily stop him along the way. <laughs> look at us, we look exactly the same. Oh, well, both blondes, I guess. That's only because you got me to tie my hair, but my goodness. Philip was a character who was a little bit clueless and also just deeply infatuated with Don. When Don over and over tells him that she has no interest in him, he just, he can't accept it. Everybody sees you slobbering all over her. Don will never leave Jimmy for you. Philip's rather persistent with things. His love takes him along some maybe some dark turns along the way and almost a bit obsessive at times. You play as beautifully as she sang. Everything about you reminds me of your mother. You are just as captivating as she was. Maybe more so. It is important to not judge our characters that we're playing, but Philip's choices along the way make it very hard for me to sort of consider him a, a good person. There will be no sadness here. After Emily died, we shut the door on sadness. Charlotte is a childlike woman who's had a very, very hard life. She has been under the domineering world of her sister, Emily. I live in the Meadows, and it's a rundown mansion. I had a child at one point that I was made to give up, and I think that deeply hurt me. I have quite a sad life, but I do have the love of my life, Luther, who also lives there. Luther and I, we had our dark days, too. Charlotte is so beautifully played by Bronwyn because even though Charlotte's scary, you can see that she has this kindness and this kind heart. Later, Emily is finally gone and she can be with Luther. Don tells them that they can be at the Meadows in perpetuity and she actually offers them money and they refuse it. They don't need money, they just need each other, they just need peace and quiet, they just need their love. You came to the right place, the house of fun. That loving relationship makes the Meadows a completely different place. So while it was a prison for Don in Secrets of the Morning, it's a refuge for Christy. And in fact, when she has nowhere else to go, she realizes, I'm going to go to the Meadows. And she's welcomed there by Luther and Charlotte. So we decided to come here. I hope that's OK. Of course. You children stay as long as you can stand it. Right at the beginning of Midnight Whispers, Dawn tries to protect her daughter. She tries to tell her daughter, this family's cursed. This is what happened to me, and you've got to be careful. Right after Dawn warns her of this curse, Cutler's Cove literally goes up in flames, killing Dawn and Jimmy. Christy thinks, my mom tried to warn me. I need to know everything. One of the more satisfying revelations of Midnight is that Christy begins to explore her family's past. She has a conversation with Charlotte where she talks about all of the lies and the secrets. And it's Charlotte who says, you bring those out into the light, it's time. It's time this family stop hiding and lying. I always think Lifetime is willing to go to edgier elements of life. This has been probably the most meaningful set I've worked on in terms of the cast and crew. A lot of love, uh, a lot of jokes. <laughs> Everyone feels very comfortable with each other, and it's nice when, you know, in between takes and stuff like that, there's banter and we're being silly. The actors themselves really grew to sort of respect each other and respected each other's talent. There's an intensive time period where you're making four movies in a short period of time, so they're with each other a lot for work. I know Breck and Corey are really close as friends now. I love that story that like the best friends in the movie became like kind of best friends in real life. V.C. Andrews and like all of these books, they really speak to women, really speaks to families, really speaks to drama, just trying to survive. There's always an element of romance. There's always an element of wish fulfillment and these things that are just out of reach of sort of the regular person. 
that's all stuff that happens in uh, B.C. Andrews stories and how it affects people and their emotional lives are all stuff that happens on Lifetime, too.